What if ChatGPT could see your Canva designs? And by that, I don't mean taking screenshots of these designs and pasting them into ChatGPT for feedback. What I'm talking about here is a true integration between ChatGPT and Canva. A world where you would tell ChatGPT, hey, chat, have a look at my latest Canva design titled XYZ and tell me what you think about it. Give me ways to improve that design. Or hey, chat, take a look at the latest wide board I created in my Canva account and give me a summary of everything that's been written on these sticky notes. Well, my friends, that day has come. Let me show you how it works. What's up, everyone? Ronnie here, your go-to Canva guru. Today, we dive deep into this new integration, this amazing news shared by Canva on LinkedIn that ChatGPT can now search my Canva design. So this is the post that Canva shared on LinkedIn. The news was also broken by Anwar, who is the head of ecosystem at Canva. So the guy in charge of all of the Canva integrations and the app marketplace. And the post announces this brand new integration via the deep research connectors between ChatGPT and Canva. So without further ado, let's jump into all of that. Let's unpack this news, see what it does and how you can leverage that in your daily workflow. All right, let's start by understanding who actually has access to this deep research Canva connector, because there is a little bit of confusion. Canva announced it's available, but the truth is that, yes, it is available, but not for everyone just yet. Let me show you what I mean. So this is my ChatGPT Plus account. In order to kind of set up your deep research Canva connector, you will need to follow these exact steps. From the homepage of your ChatGPT account, click on Tools, okay? And from here, run a deep research. But here, you need to click on Deep Research until you see this telescope right here with the research in blue. And the Sources button is where you should see all of your connectors. So by default, if you are in Europe, just like me, or if you are in Switzerland, or if you are in the UK, you will only see GitHub as your only option for connectors. Even if you click on connect more, you shouldn't be able to find anything else right there. So that is unfortunately the reality of all the European countries, including Switzerland, including the UK, right? So I found this information on the OpenAI website, the help section. So there is a workaround and the workaround is to use a VPN. All right. So I just happen to have a VPN right here. It is not connected right now because I wanted to show you this. I'm going to connect it to United States. There you go. I am now connected to the United States server. So what you do from here, just refresh your ChatGPT tab right here. And then once again, you will click on tools, run deep research and sources. Now, because I'm using this VPN, you will see more connectors. You'll see Box, Canva, Dropbox, GitHub, Gmail and Connect More will give you even more options. So let's click on the Canva connector. All right. So find and fetch your Canva designs. That's what I want. Click on connect, continue to Canva. And I will land on this page where I kind of need to confirm that I want to connect my Canva account to ChatGPT. But I love that I have the option of choosing my team, my Canva team. I don't want my main Canva account, the team around the account to be fully connected to ChatGPT. For some reason, I kind of like my privacy and I don't want all of my company information and designs to be there. I have so many important documents in my Canva account. So I'm just going to select another team right here. I'm going to go for my Ronnie's team. There you go. And allow. Now this should quickly connect my Canva account to ChatGPT. You will see a little bit of wheels turning and there you go. So now I can see that Canva via deep research is connected to my ChatGPT. You see, you can come back here, hit the manage button to disconnect your account if you decide, okay, this is not for you. But yeah, that's pretty much how it's done. So for those of you who 
like me live in the EU but cannot wait to try this functionality in ChatGPT, I will leave you my affiliate link for NordVPN, which is the VPN I am using. This QR code or the link in the description will give you three free months of NordVPN so you can try the product. Full transparency, this is an affiliate link. So if you sign up, I will get a little commission on your subscription. But this video is not sponsored by NordVPN. It's just me sharing my free trial with you guys because honestly, this service has been working for me and especially to work with ChatGPT who always or never ships first to Europe. Now, let's continue with the tutorial. All right, let's give this connector a spin. I want to show you how you can now easily get access to all of your Canva content, knowledge, information straight from ChatGPT. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and fetch this whiteboard right here, which is whiteboard that we used in one of the Canva verified expert meetings talking about the marketplace, the app marketplace in Canva, right? So there are four different sections in this whiteboard. I'm not going to show you too much, but basically, yeah, it was a brand brainstorming and everyone brought some ideas right here with different sticky notes. So what I will be trying to do in ChatGPT is to just mention this whiteboard by its title, you see community feedback, and see if ChatGPT can go and fetch it and find it and access its information. All right. So I came to ChatGPT, started a new conversation, click on tool, deep research, sources, made sure Canva was turned on. I also turned off web search just to be sure. Okay, so only Canva is available right here in the sources. And then I prompted the following. Find a Canva whiteboard titled Community Feedback and summarize the sticky notes on each of the four sections. Okay, I ran this prompt and immediately ChatGPT is going to follow up with a few questions, you know, a few follow-up questions to make sure you are on the right track, you are providing enough information so that it can perform the task. Okay, the deep research tool works like that. You would always have follow-up questions. And again, I have created an entire tutorial about this. I will leave a link in the description if you are interested in watching this full tutorial about the ChatGPT deep research tool, which is pretty powerful in my opinion. So what I did, I answered these questions. Okay, do you know approximately when the community feedback whiteboard was created or last updated? So yes, it was last edited seven days ago. Are there any unique visual elements like color coded section of specific labels that can identify the four sections. So it wanted to make sure it understood what four sections I was talking about. So I said, yes, the four sections are the following. And then I gave the name of each sections. Okay. So these are the different division in my whiteboard with each of them had a specific question for us to brainstorm. And then three, do you want a detailed summary of each sticky note or a high level summary for each section? And I said, I want you for each section to give me a list of the ideas contained in the corresponding sticky notes. You can merge sticky notes containing the same idea into one item. Okay, great. So it thought for 11 minutes. This is important. This is not going to be an instantaneous response. It's going to take time to process the information, to go check and grab the information. What you can do from here, if you click on that line right here that says how long it's been uh, researching for, you will have the entire chain of thought. Okay, so I'm mapping out the sticky notes on the community feedback whiteboard, blah, blah, blah. You see it's accessing Canva, reading Canva, read more from Canva, etc., etc. So you can really see the entire flow that ChatGPT's agent, Deep Research, has been conducting in order to get to the answer. And I don't know why it says seven sources, because I really cut the access to the web. So among all of these seven sources, all I see here is my one Canva document titled Community Feedback. So it's only really this community feedback that has been used. The seven sources might be a little bug. All right, so summary of my whiteboard. Let's see and uh, check the accuracy of this summary. The community feedback Canva whiteboard updated seven days ago, collected input from the community across four sections. Below is a summary of the sticky notes under each section with duplicated ideas merged. So what is a paid app? Okay, so here are different sticky notes ideas. So five, main 
main ideas. So a paid app in Canva offers unique value beyond Canva's core features. Okay, so a paid app should provide something not already available in Canva. Example, a unique or advanced capability that justifies an extra cost. So interesting. Let's see if we can find this information. So it should offer something that is not directly already offered in Canva. So I'm going to switch over to my whiteboard. So this whiteboard right here, there it is. I'm going to zoom in on that whiteboard and come to the right section. What is a paid app? A paid app should offer something that you cannot find on Canva, maybe something unique. So if I come back to my first line right here, offer unique value beyond Canva's core feature, should provide something not already available in Canva. So as you can see, this information is correct. And I love that ChatGPT was able to access my Canva whiteboard with all its information and summed it up like so in a couple of bullet points in only 11 minutes. So obviously it would be great if this took only a few seconds, but I believe this will get faster. And also nothing forces you to just sit there in your chair while it's doing this and watch it do it. You can just launch this and then come back to it after half an hour or after 15 minutes and you will have your answer right here. So I think this was pretty amazing. This is the first thing I wanted to show you. All right, let's move into the second demo. All right, guys, this is where things get serious, right? I believe what I'm going to show you is going to change the way we design. For a lot of us, we are really entering the era of AI powered design. ChatGPT, by having access to your Canva designs, your Canva documents, can obviously do more than summarize the information it contains. It could very well give me some feedback, some savvy graphic design feedback on my designs, like critique them, but also suggest some improvement I could bring to these designs. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you in the second demo. So what I have here are three thumbnails that I developed in the previous version of the Canva master course, the 2024 version of this course. So I made these about two years ago. I am now again updating this massive course. So watch this space if you are in the Canva master course already, because there is a whole new course coming for you. Anyways, these were three thumbnails that were part of the social media section and I was showing how to design YouTube thumbnails. So I made these as part of a fictional series with my NGO Fairtrade Connection called the series The Voices of Fairtrade and we have different artisan stories. Okay, so I made these thumbnails and I'm curious to get ChatGPT's feedback pretending to be an art director on like what does it think about my design? Right. So let me show you how I did that. So I obviously use the same thing. So deep research, connect with Canva and prompted the following. You are an art director. I need you to give me feedback on the YouTube video thumbnails I designed in Canva. The document that contains my thumbnail is titled S06L08 YouTube thumbnails. Okay. So that is section six, lecture eight of the course, YouTube thumbnail. It was last edited three years ago. So I'm anticipating the follow-up questions that I had for the first demo and just making sure they are included in my prompt here. So next, I'd like you to focus on general feedback in order to improve the design, click worthiness and ability to generate views on YouTube of my thumbnails. Okay, so that was my prompt. I ran that. I'd be glad to help, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so is this the correct title? So it's just making sure that S06L08 YouTube thumbnail is the correct version, the correct document I want wanted to review. And even though it was last 83 years ago, okay, so it's just confirming the information I already gave it. Also, are you open to me reviewing all thumbnail designs within that document or just a specific one? So I answered yes, S06L08 YouTube thumbnail is the correct title. Review the first three pages slash thumbnails in that document. I wanted a feedback on all the thumbnails. All right, so it got to work, took about 10 minutes and here is the feedback. Okay, so basically I'm not gonna read everything, but I'm gonna read the first feedback for thumbnail number one, Bull Bully's story. And before I do so, I'm gonna quickly split my screen so you can see both my conversation with ChatGPT and the actual thumbnail. So you can actually, yeah, compare what it tells me with the design. So if you're ready, one, two, 
All right, so there you go. I have my thumbnails on this side, right? The three thumbnails. And the feedback you see here, thumbnail one, Bulbuli's story, is this one right here. So focus on this thumbnail. Maybe I can zoom in a bit. All right, like so. The first point of ChatGPT is color contrast. Ensure that the text, the voices of Fairtrade, Bulbuli's story, has a strong contrast against its background. If Bulbuli's photo's background is bright or busy, consider adding a semi-transparent dark overlay behind the text. So behind this text. So here it seems that the advice is that if the background, if the photo behind my text is a little bit too busy or bright, I may want to consider adding, especially here, because you see it gets clearer, lighter, and we have white overlays. So it's giving me the advice, maybe I could darken this background somehow. Okay. Next, use bold, bright colors that is recommended to catch the viewer's attention. Next is font choices in size. Evaluate the font used for legibility. The title should be big, bold, and clear since thumbnails are viewed at a small size. If the current font is thin or overly decorative, switch to a clean, heavy typeface. So it seems here that the advice I'm receiving is not super critiquing this particular design. It's just general advice on what would work as for a YouTube thumbnail. And I can see that by hovering over the different sources right here, I can see this is coming from somewhere else. Okay, you see lecture 19, your or choice of font, etc., etc. So it's interesting that it's fetching more sources still in the Canva website to give me these pieces of advice right here. So make sure those two words are in large font size. This is where it gets interesting and specific. The series tagline, the voices of fair trade, can be in smaller secondary font. It should not be competing with the main title. So if it's currently in the same size or style as Bulbuli's story, try reducing the size or weight so that the viewer eyes go to Bulbuli's story first. So this is a particular critique aimed at my specific design because I made the name of the series actually bigger than the name of the episode or the person's story, right? And this will come again a little bit later in visual hierarchy. Establish a clear visual hierarchy so that the most important element, so that would be Bulbuli's face and the title Bulbuli's story, dominate the thumbnail. The viewer should understand immediately that this is Bulbuli's story being told. To achieve this, ensure Bulbuli's face and the name are the focal points on this design. The text, the voices of fair trade is context branding and it can be smaller or placed in a corner or along the top. Whereas Bulbuli's story should be front and center. So you might position Bulbuli's story on the opposite side of the image from her face so that each element has its own space and they don't overlap or compete. So this is really, really interesting. Then it goes on saying, use color and size to your advantage. For example, the name could be in a bright color or high contrast white and the tagline in a more neutral or subdued tone. This way, and this is where it gets really specific, this way, a quick glance communicates who and what the video is about. Okay, The hierarchy of information should be one, Bulbuli's face. Two, Bulbuli's story title. Okay, so this little title right here should be the second thing I read or I discover when I scan through this thumbnail. And then three, the series name or tagline. And it goes on about image clarity, overall composition, balance, etc. And then I have my thumbnail number two's feedback, which is pretty much the same because I made these all consistent looking because they are part of a series, right? So basically my takeaway from ChatGPT's feedback on my design and suggestion to improve would be to kind of switch this title right here for this one bigger one right here. So Bulbuli's story should be the bigger text I am reading here instead of the voices of Fairtrade. So my verdict here is that this was super useful, all right, to receive feedback on all of these different aspects of the thumbnail. So I have some feedback on the color contrast, on the font choices and sizes, on the emotional expressions of my photos, visual hierarchy, image clarity, composition, etc., etc. And yes, some of this information was quite generic, but still, like it was brought to me in a concise package and together with this generic information, I received some specific action point I could actually take to improve my design, to improve my thumbnail. So my two cents is that this integration is 
Chef Kiss. This for me is the future of design. I believe what's coming next is a deeper integration where like I would just change these two lines in the design by simply prompting, not having to do it in Canva. We will lose a little bit of the magic of what designing means. I agree, but that's where we are going, guys. So you would better get used to it and you'd better jump on the AI bandwagon and just start learning everything it can do because this is pretty amazing. All right. Thank you for watching until the end. I'm going to leave you with the rest of our AI video playlist so you can discover more of what's going on with Canva and ChatGPT.